when I started, actually I consulted a friend who is already into business and uh, we were able to get uh, somebody who sells this equipment. Though there are main offices in Lagos, but they have a branch office in Abuja here. So I discussed with them and they gave me the various prices of the equipment that I required to set up both sachet and bottle water factory. And as you, may, as you might wish to know, money is not always available. So what I did was to pay instrumentally. I was paying down for some of the equipments. Anyone I'm able to get the money for, I will go and pay. And I will take that one as having paid for. So I don't pay cash. I most occasions I used to do transfer, and I have the record in my my bank account record is there that I've transferred money to so so person. So that was I was able to keep track of my transactions with them. Uh, after that, when they brought some of the equipments to Abuja, they called me and I went to their warehouse in Abuja and I saw the equipment there. Gradually, it was when I had finished the payment. Though when, while payment was going on, I was making effort to complete the building of the structure. And I was also consulting with them to guide us on uh, what and what to do so that we don't go and build the structure wrongly. I also had uh, consulted a friend. I was linked up with a friend who works in, with NAVDAC. So he was always visiting the factory to also guide us. So that at the end of the day, when they come for inspection, the corrections will not be too much for us. So I was able to achieve that, and uh, it really helped us that NAVDAC were coming to guide us on what to do, where to put this facility, where to put that facility. I was able to do that. And when the equipments, when I have finished paying the equipments, when the equipment staff arrived at Abuja, they moved the equipment to the factory for me and the installation started. Though they charged me for installation, which I paid, and I spoke to them about the need to even train people who are interested in working in my factory. And that we did. It went a long way to help me in establishing this factory. Luckily, in the farm there, I had a borehole already, so I only had to expand on it, brought in more tanks that will be able to serve the production. The challenge I had initially was that I didn't know this water production takes a lot of water. In short, a lot of water is being wasted during the treatment process. It was along the line I realized that when we started, at times we will work for two, three hours and the water is finished. So I have to increase the storage facility. And uh, that went a long way to help me to increase the storage facilities up to where we are today. So I want to thank God. It was a good experience. And that is why I can stand to advise one or two other people that are interested. I will tell them what it takes to set up a water factory. It's not what comes easy, but we we'll take up a challenge. We'll go through it. God will guide you and you will succeed. That's where we are today. Yes, the borehole I had had a good yield. Good yield. Even up to today, I'm just using one borehole and it's giving us enough water. Because during the drilling, we have to ensure that we get to the aquifer. We didn't just stop at surface water. We got to the aquifer where we had good and enough water. Yes, one borehole is serving us. Yes. You know, the, what most people don't know is that it's not every land you see that you think when you drill borehole there, you will get water. So what I try to do is that before even thinking of drilling, I take uh, I, the goat and survey the place for me. They survey the place. In short, there was a particular parcel of land that I wanted to buy for, fact, for, for this water production factory. When they surveyed the place, they told me that ah, this place has no water. I was buying the place to establish uh, bottled water, and they told me no water here, so there's no point buying the land. I had to forget about that area and have to go to where there is water. So I would advise those who want to also set up a water table or water production factory to ensure that they are sure that there is water in that area.
before it's setting up so that you don't set up a factory and you have to start having that challenge of water. The major thing you need there as raw material is water because it is water you want to produce. Thank you. Thank you all for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on more future videos and also check out our Instagram and our TikTok too. We'll be posting short videos there of our water production process and um, it's just a way for you to connect more with our factory and find out more about the activities that goes on in a water production factory. So you can support us by subscribing to us on all these platforms. And I'm also happy to announce that Samsi Factory is working on an online course and you can check the description box for a link to it to sign up. The course is a detailed course because this course is with the managing director of Samsip and various engineers that I've worked with over the years to make our factory and bring our factory to where it is now currently. So this course is a collaboration with all these people and we'll be telling you step by step from beginning to end all it takes, what is required and all the processes involved in setting up a water production factory. So you can check out the link in the description box to sign up for the course and um, I look forward to seeing you there. It's very beneficial. Like this is the course you need. This is the course that we didn't have when we started our own water production factory. So this will help you cut down on all the unnecessary costs, all the mistakes that might come up and every other thing that might, you know, stand as a stumbling block to you setting up your own factory. So you can sign up for the course and um, I look forward to seeing you there.